second page, they got a lovely diagram there up at the top of the page that um, shows the formation, the steps in formation of a biofilm. So first of all, we'd like to just describe what we mean by a biofilm. A biofilm is a community of microbes that are living in a sticky, what they call an extracellular matrix. It very often is made out of um, polysaccharides, carbohydrates. And you all remember from lecture, we discussed how the bacteria that live in our mouth, when we eat sugar, it triggers them to form that slime layer, that, that loosely attached, sticky glycocalyx. And the bacteria in our mouth will use that slime layer to stick to our teeth so they won't be swallowed when we, when we swallow fluid, saliva, or food. <coughs> And then once they, once they stick to our teeth, other bacteria in our mouth can stick to them in this sticky slime layer. So pretty soon we have a whole community of bacteria living together, attached to a surface in their environment. And in our mouth, of course, it's our teeth. So we'll just do a little mini, our own little mini cartoon here, you guys. So let's say that this is some surface in the environment. It could be a tooth, it could be a rock in a creek. It could be, it could be a, um, in a patient, it could be an indwelling catheter, an IV catheter, a urinary catheter. It could be a damaged heart valve, it could be an artificial heart valve, it could be a pacemaker, it could be an artificial joint. Okay, um, so in your patients, a lot of these biofilms are gonna form on either damaged tissues or artificial surfaces in your, in your patients. Okay, so let's say that this is some surface, and um, as you see in the cartoon there, um, if we're talking about, say, let's pretend that this is a catheter in our patient. Catheter, okay, an artificial, um, artificial substance in our patient's body. And as the cartoon shows, usually proteins um, end up, uh, proteins from our body will coat these artificial surfaces. And it's believed that that's kind of like for the step one of formation of a biofilm. So we have the proteins that end up coating the artificial surface, and then bacteria can attach to those proteins. And when um, either uh, through possible adhesions, maybe surface proteins, it might be a nonspecific attachment, like through uh, a slime layer, like as we have on our teeth. Okay, so we'll have some bacteria that stick, okay, and they start synthesizing, if they haven't already, they start synthesizing that sticky um, um, slime layer. And as it accumulates, this is often called an extracellular, which means outside the cell, extracellular um, matrix. And so we'll have more and more bacteria sticking. Um, if there's more than one type of bacteria in the environment, we could have different types of microbes um, attaching. So I'll, I'll put in some little spirilla here, okay, and we get more extracellular matrix, and we'll put more and more layers of bacteria here, okay? So pretty soon, we have this community of bacteria living in this sticky extracellular matrix. So this is our biofilm. Now, the reason we're so concerned about biofilm formation in human patients, and it is believed that the majority of human bacterial, bacterial infections involve biofilms, these are very difficult to treat. It's very challenging to kill the bacteria that are making these biofilms. And if we just take a look at our cartoon here, we can understand why. So first of all, um, it's very difficult for antibiotics. It's very difficult for antibiotics to diffuse through all these layers of bacteria and slime very difficult for antibiotics to diffuse down to the bottom layers of bacteria. So the biofilm acts as a diffusion barrier. It will inhibit, um, slow down the penetration of antibiotics. So these guys living in the deep layers, they're really quite protected. It's almost like they have a little fort here. Mm -hmm. um, often, these guys down below, um, often there aren't a lot of nutrients that, that diffuse down to them. So often they're in stationary, what's called a stationary phase of growth. And this is really kind of a resting stage for the bacteria. And the reason this will also increase their resistance to antibiotics is 
because antibiotics are usually most effective against actively growing and dividing bacteria. If they're just in a resting stage, the antibiotics can't work very well. Okay, so um, that's a second reason why bacteria living in these biofilms are difficult to treat. Now, another reason is, is that eventually your patient is going to start making antibodies or immunoglobulins. And I'll just show them as little Y-shaped uh, molecules. They have the same problem as the antibiotics. It's really difficult for the, antibiotic, the antibodies to penetrate down to the deeper layers. Okay, and um, another thing, I just love how your author describes this. Um, your phagocytic cells, some of your white blood cells, um, and so some of the um, phagocytes of your body, for example, your neutrophils and your macrophages, their job is to find and attach to, ingest, and destroy these invading bacteria. But again, they're pretty big. So we'll do, I'll just make kind of a generic white blood cell here. And we can see that, that again, the biofilm offers physical protection for the bacteria. Our phagocytes can't penetrate through the layers of the biofilm. So, wow, these bacteria are really, really hard to treat. Now, um, um, I, love cartoon, I love cartoons, you guys know that. What's also really nice about the cartoon is it shows um, these biofilms, um, pieces of the biofilm can break off and travel, for example, through the bloodstream to other parts of the body, and then the bacteria will start a new biofilm. Um, these little pieces of biofilm that break off, they can actually trigger clots to form. And of course, that could be devastating, right, if we have clots form throughout the body. So we can see there's many a reason why these biofilms are so hard to treat. So it's very hard to treat bacteria living in biofilms. For example, a classic example is somebody that has an artificial hip joint, and sadly, these often become infected with Staphylococcus aureus, and the staph starts living in these biofilms. Well, sadly, what often happens is because, again, you can't kill all the Staphylococcus aureus living in the biofilm, often what they'll have to do is surgically, surgically go in, take the artificial hip joint out in one surgical procedure, um, put the patient on really high level antibiotics for several weeks and then have another surgery to put a new hip joint in. And can you imagine, folks, on somebody that was older, how traumatic that would be? I mean, just really tough. So often the problem in uh, people that have serious infection with these biofilms, you have to go in and physically clean them out. And that's very traumatic for your patient. As we mentioned, it's not only artificial surfaces that bacteria like to colonize in our bodies, damaged surfaces, um, such as folks that have had um, heart attacks, um, folks that have had scarlet fever, folks that maybe have congenital uh, defects in their heart valves, all those abnormal surfaces bacteria love to colonize. Now we might say, where the heck are these bacteria coming from? You know, just in our blood like that. Well, we want to remember, you guys, remember those oral bacteria that we said? You know, we've got them all the time. Probably every time we eat, every time we brush our teeth, certainly every time we go to the doc, uh, excuse me, the dentist, and we have any kind of dental procedure performed, including cleaning, probably we have oral bacteria that get into little traumatized blood vessels, little capillaries in our gum. So we'll have the, what are called these transient, transient means short term. We'll have little transient bacteremias every time every time we eat, brush our teeth, go to the dentist. And here's that ending, emia, which refers to blood. And usually the prefix tells us what's in our blood. Okay, so we have little transient, short-term little oral bacteria that get into our bloodstream. Now normally they'll be quickly destroyed by antimicrobial substances and phagocytic cells in our, in our bloodstream. But if they encounter one of these abnormal surfaces or damaged tissue, um, they can start forming that biofilm, and then it's very difficult for them 
to be treated. Now, that's one reason, those of you going into dentistry, um, you'll know that it'll be really important that you take your patient's history. You want